Hello everyone, I'm Rod Wortham and welcome to this episode of Race Face Driver Updates here on Racing America. We had a busy weekend of racing that saw 11 drivers take to the track from junior late models and super late models in California, NASCAR Xfinity in Texas, Cars Tour in Virginia, and Inex Racing in Georgia. We also had a couple of races that were won by Mother Nature. Don't forget to look for this guy somewhere in today's show. Write down the lap number, then go to spotterlap.com and claim your prize. The NASCAR Xfinity Series was at Texas Motor Speedway for the SRS Distribution 250. But before we check in on Sheldon Creed and Anthony Alfredo, let's take a lap around Texas Motor Speedway with this week's Fast Lap with Fast Pasta. Hey everybody, Anthony Alfredo here. I'm at the virtual Texas Motor Speedway on iRacing to get some reps for this weekend's real life race here. Ever since they reconfigured this track, you have two completely different ends of the racetrack and even pit exit's tricky here. You can see how it's very flat. It actually feels like there's it's off camber and as the car kind of wants to get sucked out onto the track. So you gotta be careful of that blend line. So you don't get a penalty leaving pit road, but as we get up to speed, carry some momentum up here in the top in three and four. This is usually where the PJ1 traction compound or resin is applied but super fast corner, ton of banking. But then we head down into turn one where it's really flat. You can see it's super wide, but it's just such a flat corner and not a whole lot of grip. You gotta be smooth on that throttle coming off the corner, low and straight, because there's not a lot of banking to hold the car. So as wide as it is, it actually feels quite narrow since the car just gets sucked out to the wall. But in turn three and four here, ton of banking. A lot of throttle time. You can see I never come completely out of it, just pedaling it enough to make sure the car doesn't step out from underneath me. But coming back through the quad oval on the front straightaway, back into turn one, get down to this white line, wrap this corner tight, make sure we hit this exit, run it back out, keep our momentum up, down the back straightaway and into the steep banking of turns three and four. Once again, drive it in there, let it set and then just pedal it along the white line as best as you can. Uh, but you'll have options to run higher with that PJ1 traction compound, which makes it quite interesting. So hopefully all the fans enjoy. I know I'm excited to get down to Texas and strap into my number 23 Chevrolet Camaro. Thanks for the tour, Anthony. We now shift from the virtual to the real thing. Anthony had to start 38th in his Hour Motorsports first phase Chevy Camaro due to contact with the wall during qualifying. The Connecticut driver raced his way to eighth at the end of stage one and was setting 16th heading into the final stage. Let's check with Anthony for his take on the race. And that's tough, first DNF of the year. We've had a really strong year going so far. The guys in Austin got fixing the car after qualifying yesterday. It was really solid today. Our first phase Camaro at good speed. I felt like we could run top 10 or 12, scored stage points in the first one, and we're working back in the top 15, but decided to pit there for some strategy and being in the back of the field got just caught up in someone else's mess. There's a big wreck and I uh, couldn't avoid it. So very unfortunate for first phase and Speedy Cash is being their, their main track. Wanted to park at Speedy Cash Victory Lane, but it'll have to wait till next time. Very thankful for their support. We'll rebuild and be even better at Charlotte next week. That's a tough one. Up next for Anthony, NASCAR Xfinity this weekend at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Sheldon Creed was also at Texas in his number two Wheeland Chevrolet that was honoring 619 police officers whose lives were taken in the line of duty. Their names were on Sheldon's deck lid. Sheldon qualified 21st, moved through the field to finish seventh in stage one, but backed it into the wall early in stage two, suffering significant damage. Sheldon was able to keep running after several laps to repair damage, finishing in 26. Up next for Sheldon, the Alsco Uniforms 300 at Charlotte Motor Speedway on Saturday. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we check in on the Cars Tour race, where both Caden Honeycutt and Connor Mozak saw action, and Jake Bowman making a super late model start on the West Coast. We'll be right back with more Race Face Driver updates 
here on Racing America. Hi, my name is Grant Thompson and you're watching Race Face Driver Updates on Racing America. As we said before the break, both Caden Honeycutt and Connor Mozak were at Franklin County Speedway in Callaway, Virginia for the Cars Tour Autos by Nelson 225. The key to this race had to be patience and that started before the drivers ever started due to rain. The late model stock drivers didn't take the green till after midnight and then they experienced a couple of red flags due to the track breaking up in turn four. However, sometime around 2 a.m. in the morning, the checkers finally flew. So how did the pair fare? We start with Connor Mozak, who was making only his first start of the year in the Cars Tour, as well as his first start with Justin Carroll Racing. Connor qualified seventh and ran mid-pack most of the race, even after suffering some damage early on. We were able to catch up with Connor back in Charlotte on Monday morning for his take on the weekend. Hey guys, uh, got back in the late model stock this weekend. Uh, did my first uh, car store race with Justin Carroll. I thought we had a great car all weekend. Felt like we were about a top five contender really, uh, especially on long run speed. And um, you know, qualified seventh, which I was pretty happy with. Qualifying has been something I've struggled with, especially uh, in these car store races with the field being so tight. So uh, top 10 starting spot for me, I felt pretty good about. And normally uh, in those races, I'm, I'm able to drive forward and, and get a few spots at least. So I um, thought we were going to be in a good position. Um, but, you know, we were on the bottom and the top was a little bit better on the re the initial starts and um, just lost a spot, had a couple cautions really early. And, uh, and then unfortunately, like five or six laps later, I was on the outside and just got run up into the fence and bent uh, the rear end housing pretty good, uh, or so we think. Something in the rear for sure was bent. Um, car got really loose after that, and we kind of struggled from there. I was able to work the right front off a little bit and uh, get the balance back towards the end of the race, um, but I definitely feel like our car was just never the same after that. Um, but we survived, we got it to the end, and we didn't give up, and we were able to finish seventh, so... I think for for what happened and and uh, all we went through, still coming out with top ten there is uh, I thought it was a good day overall. So um, probably be a while before I get back in the late mile stock, but hopefully uh, another race or two later this year. Overall, top ten finish of seventh, as competitive as this series is, that's pretty good. Up next for Connor, double duty this weekend. First in the Ark and Menard series at Charlotte Motor Speedway on Friday and then on to Lime Rock Park for the Trans Am TA2 race on Saturday and Sunday. Caden Honeycutt entered the weekend third in points and showed good speed on Friday, topping the speed charts. However, Saturday was a different story, as the team was only able to post up a 12th quickest time. It only took 24 laps for the Texas driver to put his number 12, Napa, Auto Parts by Nelson Chevy into the top five. He then moved into third on lap 60 and held that position for the next 35 laps before getting caught up in an incident after a late race restart. Here's a video clip of that restart. His tires, does he have more good left in the top three? Look at this, turn two, Mike Looney finally gets underneath and around Carter Hall. Crossover, will it make oh, contact? No! contact in front of the field. Mike Looney goes around, Caden Honeycutt, Connor Hall, Trevor Ward is in it. Brandon Pierce, I believe, stops to avoid. That had disaster written all over it, and that could have been a lot worse than it was. But what it has done is change the complexion of this race. Connor Hall, Mike Looney, and all those drivers stopped to the tail for their involvement in the caution. I believe the Cars Tour rule is if you stop on the track, then you are considered to be part of the incident. But Caden had nowhere to go. Might want to rethink that rule. We were able to catch up with Caden on Sunday night at the NASCAR All-Star Race at Texas Motor Speedway. Hey everybody, it's Kane Honeycutt here. We just got finished up here at the All-Star Race. 
currently on a 40-hour uh, uh, awake system. We had a long night in the car store at Franklin County Speedway. Call 5-12. Um, quickly work our way up through the field, got up to third, uh, was racing Mike and, and Connor Hall right up there at the end, and uh, unfortunately, another horrible break. Um, can't seem to get the monkey off our back, just a horrible deal yet again. Um, just unfortunate, but you know, we had a really good race car. Um, that's what we had looked forward to going to Langley, try to turn around our season. Luckily, we had our first car to win at Langley last year, so maybe we can uh, repeat that, but. Uh, Enjoyed some good racing here at the All-Star Race with Next Gen Cars. It was a good race. It was fun to watch, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to do this soon. But next race, uh, we'll be at Dirt Racing Saturday night. Uh, two cars, factory stock and a sport mod uh, for Kane Buckmeyer Motorsports and Melvin Kent Motorsports. So we'll have fun this weekend and win some money and uh, go back and hit it hard at Langley. You can hear the disappointment in his voice. Back to his happy place this weekend on the dirt in both the factory stock and sport mod. Jesse Love was scheduled to race at Greenville Pick and Speedway on Saturday, but the race was canceled due to a bad forecast. The question, was it weather or the car count? Up next for Jesse, super late models at Jennerstown Speedway on June 4th. We're gonna take another short commercial break, and when we return, We'll check in on junior late model drivers Casey Klein and Brody Moore and Jake Bowman making his first super late model start in California. How did the trio do? We'll find out when we return with more race face driver updates here on Racing America. My name is Carter Whalen and you're watching race face driver updates on Racing America. Jake Bowman was at Irwindale Speedway for his first super late model start of the year. The young Huntington Beach driver qualified his number 24 in second in the 22 car field. Jake ran in the top 10 for the entire race, eventually finishing in seventh. Very impressive as the SRL series showcases some of the top drivers in the country. Up next for Jake, back to Nashville Fairground Speedway on June 4th. Brody Moore was at Madera Speedway for round four of the 5150 Junior Late Model Series in his number 78 Charlie Wilson prepared Chevrolet. Brody entered the weekend second in championship points and was looking to visit Victory Lane for the second time this year. Brody qualified eighth. The team felt they missed the setup but thought the car would race really well for the 70 lap feature. Brody ran in the top 10 for the entire race, eventually finishing in six. We caught up with Brody right after the race. Hey everyone, we just finished round number four of the televised MAV-TV 5150 Junior Late Model Series. We had a consistent car throughout practice, but we unfortunately missed the setup for qualifying, which put us P8 for the start of the main event. We had a super fast car and we made the right adjustments at the intermission break. And with, in the last 30 laps, we drove super hard, and we were able to bring home a sixth place finish. I'd like to thank Wilson Motorsports for all the hard work they did this weekend, and I couldn't do this without the help of my sponsors, California Apartment Association's Value Insurance Plan, ARM Multi-Insurance Services, and their premier carrier, Amtrust North America, Spring Hill Suites by Marriott at Madeira, Race Face Advancement, and Friendly Jacqueline. A huge thanks to them, and I look forward to seeing you at the next race. Thank you. Brody has not finished outside of the top six in the first four rounds, including a win in round one. Up next for Brody, Super Late Models at Colorado National Speedway on June 11th. Casey Klein was also at Madera Speedway, but with plans to run both the Junior Late Model and the Pro Late Model in his number 88 Nate Clower prepared Ford. First Junior Late Models, where Casey qualified sixth, then ran in the top four for the entire race bringing home, yes, you guessed it, a fourth place finish. Casey currently sets second in points, heading into round five on June 25th. Now on to the Lunker Daddy Pro Late Model Race, where he qualified 10th and finished sixth. Let's get a race recap from the driver. Hi, I'm Casey Fine. This weekend I was racing at Madero Speedway in the 5150 Junior Late Models and the Lunker Daddy Pro Late Models. In the Junior Late Models, we had a fast car all throughout practice, and we ended up qualifying six, 
and there was a six card pill draw. I ended up drawing second, and then I ended up finishing with junior late models fourth, and then the pro late models. We had a decent car all day, and I ended up qualifying 11th. And so I started 11th because I missed out on the pill draw by one position, and then I ended up finishing sixth. But I'd like to thank all my sponsors, Thamer Farms, Mountain View Polaris, Sporty Steakhouse, Farmer Bean and C, Klein's Auto Sale, Race Face Advancement, and Friends of Jacqueline. Now I'd like to thank Nate Clare Motorsports for giving me this fast car this weekend. Up next for Casey, Pro Late Models at State Line Speedway in Post Falls, Idaho on June 4th. We're headed for our last commercial break, and when we come back, we'll check in on Hudson Bulger and Cole Denton, who were both at Chris Motorsports Park. So stay right there, and we'll return with more Race Face Driver updates here on Racing America. Hi, I'm Jesse Love, and you are watching Race Face Driver Updates on Racing America. Hudson Bulger was at Chris Motorsports Park for dual events in his Young Lions Legend car in race one, Hudson qualified sixth and finished fourth. In race two, he started fourth and finished sixth. Let's get a post-race recap from the driver. So we just wrapped it up here at Chris Motorsports Park. We had a double feature this weekend. It was a lot of fun. Um, some really good racing out there. We ended up qualifying sixth. Worked up to fourth during the first race. Second race, I started fourth. Um, got held on the outside on a restart. Got shuffled back to sixth. But... Anyways, we had a lot of fun. We next weekend, we don't have a race, but that following week starts the Thursday Thunder Series. So, see y'all then, but I'd like to thank my sponsors, Can-Am, Byron Outdoor Superstore, and Star Motorsports, Sports, Brett Reagan, and Chris Beck. Up next, INEX Thursday Thunder from Atlanta Motor Speedway, starting on June 2nd. Cole Denton returned to Chris Motorsports Park in Cordell, Georgia for dual events as well in his number 46 Mellow Yellow Bandit. In race one, Cole qualified first and finished fourth overall, but was credited with the win in the Bandit division. On to race two, where the field was inverted and he started fourth, Cole finished second overall and again was credited with the win in the Bandit class. As always, the young driver was able to give us a great race recap. Hey race fans, it's Colden. Today we're at Chris Motorsports Park for race seven and eight of the season. I qualified first, and on the start I fell all the way back to fourth, worked my way up to second, and finished fourth. But it was a perfect finish because we were two by two. Race two of the double header. I started fourth due to the finishing order of the first race today. And I fell all the way back to sixth, and a wreck happened right beside me. But when we went back green, I worked my way all the way up from fourth to second, and I almost caught the leader, finishing second. But I won both Bandit feature races. I want to thank my mom and dad, Bacon Racing, my grandparents, Race Face Advancement, and the Friends of Jacqueline Foundation. Bye, everyone. Up next for Cole, round one of Thursday Thunder at Atlanta Motor Speedway on June 2nd. It's now time for this week's Meet the Driver with 12-year-old driver Carter Whalen from Cumming, Georgia. Hello, I'm Carter Whalen. I'm 12 and a half years old from Cumming, Georgia. I've been racing for six and a half years. My current series is I've been racing quarter midgets and this year I'm transitioning into a pro truck. A funny story about me racing is one time I had to race in a sandstorm as well as one kid got out in the middle of a race and started sitting in the middle of the track. I thought those were pretty funny and my two biggest racing accomplishments was podiuming twice at national events such as when I got third place in Albuquerque, New Mexico and second in Oak Lane, Pennsylvania as well as my two wins in the Dixie Shootout Regional Series in Huntsville, Alabama and Metro Atlanta. And my hobbies are building models and RC cars. Here's my Traxxas Drag Slash. Here's one of my brother's models. 
in my dad's practice drag slash and my future plans in racing are to race whatever I have the opportunity to race and to get to the highest level in NASCAR. Great job, Carter. That's why I love quarter midget racing and Carter will be in action next weekend at Music City QMA. Other race face drivers seeing action this weekend include Landon Cox, who will be at North Georgia QMA on Saturday. That's it for this week's race face driver updates. And remember, if you've missed any of our shows, you can get caught up at raceface.tv on demand or Racing America on demand. Don't forget to follow us on social media. Make sure to check out Speed Zone Race Store for the latest in apparel and be sure to play the Spotters Challenge. As always, we encourage you to support local racing in your communities. We'll be back next week with more from your favorite race face drivers. So go out there, have a great race week. I'm Rod Wortham. Thanks for watching.